in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to thank the Lord this morning. Um, you know, the Bible says that in all things we should give thanks. And, you know, it's, it's easy for us to quote that scripture and, you know, just say thank you, Lord. But, you know, sometimes we're not, you know, it's hard to give thanks when, or would I say, it, we're not as conscious of it when we feel like, oh, I don't, what do I have to thank God for? You know, as this, I keep starting things and they don't end. I keep, you know, seasons, I keep getting to the point of breakthrough and then it's aborted or something, you know, just ridiculous things like that happen. And it's like you're recycling seasons of pain and you're like, I can't give things in this. I can't. But perhaps Thanksgiving might be the thing that could unlock that season, those, those negative cycles. You know, just thinking about even the theme of these prayers and how, you know, we always, there, there are so many, if I spoke to every single person here, I'm sure somebody can say, yes, I've, I've started things and I was not able to finish. I, I got to the point of deliverance and breakthrough and I just couldn't quite cross over that Red Sea. I couldn't get to the other side. I couldn't get into the promised land. And so I'm going to give thanks today because it's who is the person that is alive that can even cross the Red Sea. It's the person that's alive that can even say, ah, look at me, I'm in the wilderness eating manna. It's the person. So we're going to give thanks with intentionality today. We're going to thank God because if anything, first of all, we can thank God for life. Number two, we can even thank God that we're in the right mind, right mind enough to know what we need. That, we've, that we can even open our mouths to cry out to God and say, Father, let your hand finish this. Help me strengthen my own hands. Whatever it is that our request is, whatever it is that our journey has been, whether or not we were the ones who made decisions or just wickedness, wicked people and all of that, just they came after us, whatever the situation must be, let's thank God. Because first of all, we are alive. Second, we are, we are in the right mind. We can come before him. We can call upon the name of Jesus and he will actually answer. We can 
you know, invoke that name. We can use his blood, all of these different things. We can thank God for that. We can thank God for the lessons we have learned. Thank God for his word. Thank God that we have a fellowship of believers like this to gather and pray and join our faiths together. So let's come off me right now and just say, Father, I thank you. I know I do not say this enough, but I thank you. Thank you for even the times that have looked bleak, even the things that I don't understand. I thank you for it. I thank you. Jesus. Let's come off mute and begin to thank, thank the you, Lord. Father, Father thank, thank you, you for life. Thank you, thank you Father, for the ways that you have kept me, even in these evil times, oh God Almighty, even when I have not understood it, even when I have been disappointed, Lord. Father, thank you for your mercy and your goodness have protected me all the days of my life. Father, I thank you. When I look back, I see your heart Yes, even in the wilderness, you have not been in my one thing that is very common and we can see this in the life of Israelites um, and in the Bible, and we can see it in, in the story of individuals and also as, you know, as a group in the, the body, you know, the, the Israelites rather, um, we notice in that story that they kept, they could never get to their promise. They could never get to that place that God had prepared for them fully, even though God was with them, like God was so with them. Even in all their foolishness and everything, God was always with them. However, they never made it to the to the end, you know. And it almost, if you look at that from one side, it will, it will look as though God is unfaithful and his hand cannot actually finish what he starts. But when we look deeper in that story, we understand that. And not just that story, but again, other people's stories is like, what happened? Why were you not able to get to this place? Or why did it take so long for you to get here? And one of the primary reasons is a lack of transformation. It's a mindset. There's a mindset that God is saying, I cannot take you in here with this mindset. This mindset of yours, this, um, you know, there's just a lack of understanding, a lack of wisdom, old patterns of thinking, old ways of thinking. The Egypt that they were living in was ingrained in their body, in their minds. And so right now, we want to ask God to help us um, when, you know, when you read the entire book of Zechariah, you see time and time again, God says, let your hand be strong so that the temple may be rebuilt. Let your hand be strong. And what he's, he's saying, there's no, it's not, he's not saying that I'm leaving you to figure it out on your own. When he's saying, let your hand strong, he's saying, I will make your hand strong, essentially. I will make your hand strong. And the reason I'm making your hand strong is so that the temple will be built. However, the, I want to transfer this same concept to this mindset, like God will help us. 
We can ask God for help. The Bible says he who lacks wisdom, let him go to God and God will open the floodgates of heaven. That is a prayer he will surely answer. So we're going to ask for wisdom. We're going to ask for wisdom. In sure. ev- no matter what part of your, your journey you are, whatever it is, maybe you are just about to cross over. Maybe you've just started your journey. Maybe you are in the middle of it. Whatever it is, you need wisdom because we, we, a lack of wisdom will lengthen your stay in the wilderness. A lack of wisdom will keep those gates locked and you will just keep circling and you will look at Jericho. Jericho will look at you or rather Canaan will look at you and you will look at that and you cannot go there. So we're going to ask the, the, the Lord right now for wisdom and we're going to throw off every mindset that is not of God. And we're going to put on a, fr- a new mind, a, 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 we're going to embody the wisdom of God right now. And we know that wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. The Bible says this, he is the spirit of truth and he will lead us into all truth. So we need to throw away those lies that we have believed and bear on, right? Carry on that spirit of truth and embody it and ask the Lord to help us walk in in the name of Jesus. Let's come off mute and begin to pray. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you so much. If everyone can meet, please, um, we'll continue with the prayers. Thank you once again, Shadi, and um, welcome, you know, everyone to day three of our monthly prayers. Um, I actually enjoy welcoming everyone, but that is day one, day two, day three, and I haven't had the chance to do that day one and day two. And so <clears throat> let me just say welcome everyone to today's prayers, um, which happens to be the last day of our monthly prayers. I also want to apologize because I cannot speak very loudly today because I'm not at home. So I ask that you please just try to listen for my voice, especially when I'm calling a prayer um, segment to an end so that we can move on <clears throat> to the next uh, set of prayers. So we're going to move uh, kind of quickly because there are a few things that um, the Holy Spirit will address in our midst even as we go through the prayers. Now, um, as you all know, we take every time that we come together every month, um, very important, you know, trying to sit before God and um, understanding the direction we will have us go. 
And so even when Victoria harasses me with text messages back to back to back, asking me for the theme of the month, um, I will not answer until I actually have it. Not because I thought it up, but because I eventually got the direction that the Holy Spirit was leading us. And so the Spirit of God um, shared this and showed me exactly where we need to labor in prayers um, as far as the prayers this month. And so um, I had seen a uh, vision of the night. And in that picture, I saw a young lady. And um, she was she was crying. She was crying profusely. And the reason that she was crying was because it had sort of dawned on her that she was in a certain kind of cycle or pattern of her life that spelled stagnation clearly. And so she had called. And she was crying, weeping, and asking for help, and saying she needed help. She needed to break through. She needed to get out of. Um, where she was trapped and she knew that it was only going to take the hand of God. Some things had gone wrong in her life. Some things had happened in her life. Maybe some things that she had done, maybe whatever the case may have been. And so she was crying profusely and saying she now understands that where she is is stagnation and she needs a breakthrough in order to get out of there. And then I came out of it and um, I understood what the Holy Spirit was um trying to uh, explain to us. And so I'll read the verse that we have for the month, um, which is in Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 9. I'll probably read the few verses before that, just so that, you know, we get the context, even though I know many of us know this. From verse 6, it says here, it says, Then he answered and spake to me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. And this is the word of the Lord to someone here this month. I don't know how long you've labored in this situation. I don't know how long you've labored in this place where it felt like you could not just get this thing across the finish line. The word of the Lord to you. Regardless of what that obstacle is, regardless of what that hindrance is, the word of the Lord to you is, is this, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel, before Shade, before mercy, before Abigail, you shall become a plain, and she shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Verse 8 says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. So we're going to be addressing a string of issues here on the altar today. Shania, your video is on, um, just so you know. Your video is on, Shania. The word of the Lord to someone today is exactly what is captured in those verses that I've read from Zechariah 4, from verse 6 to 9. I don't know what it is in your life that feels like you've been building, you've been doing things, you've been trying your hardest, but somehow it ends up amounting to nothing. If you would capture it in one word, it's nothing. You go somewhere, but it's nowhere really, because at the end of the day, you can't tender it for anything. And we're going to be praying today because that is the thing um, that the Holy Spirit wants to address in many of our lives today. Whatever areas it is that you have been laboring in, I will address this thing in different ways. Whatever areas of your life you have been laboring in, we're going to speak right now and we're going to speak against that spirit of stagnation because it's a spirit. It's a spirit with an exact oppression. And the idea and the whole purpose of that spirit is to ensure that you never finish keeping you busy, but never actually achieving anything, never actually accomplishing anything. So I want us to open our mouth in one minute and begin to pray. I say, Father, I stand up in the name of Jesus and I come against every pattern of stagnation, every activity of the spirit that sponsors stagnation. I come against it. I stand against it. Even as your word has said, so shall it be that that which I have started, I will finish it even by your spirit in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Mm-hmm. 
Amen. 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 Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 8 says here, it says, He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, and whoso booketh and hedge, a serpent shall bite him. I've read the scripture for a reason because the part I had not shared about that vision, about that uh, dream was, but the young lady who was weeping was in fact attesting to the fact that she actually played a role in the circumstances that led to this stagnation that she was experiencing. Now, many times, you know, as believers, we... We like we don't like to take responsibility. It's like if we can just blame it on people or if we can blame it on a spirit or something, then you know it can absorb us of responsibility. But one of the quickest ways to get deliverance from something that is plaguing you is to be able to identify the part you have to play in it so that you can quickly find mercy that is allocated to you to address that issue. I'll tell you a story of a time that I found myself in a pattern of stagnation and I didn't recognize it until I was like deep in it and I said, how did I get here? One of the first jobs I had coming, well, one of the first jobs I had ever, right? Um, without going into too much details, during my time in that job, there was a way that I conducted myself that was not, <laughs> it was not optimal. It was not the way that a believer would. This was many, many, many years ago. Granted, I was, you know, still kind of young, you know, you're not taking life that seriously, you don't really know much. But there was a way that I conducted myself at that job that at the time I wasn't thinking about, you know, the depth of it. In my mind, I was just being young, just, you know, being smart, just, you know, doing whatever. And then after I had left that job, it became clear to me that indeed, you know, the truth is when you're doing something wrong, you actually know. It's just at that point, it's not, you don't realize just how, you know, serious it is. But after a while, I realized that this thing that I did, it wasn't right to. And naturally, I just said, you know what, Lord, you know, forgive me and all of that. The truth is I expected to see the effect of that bad behavior in one area. So my whole mind was like, okay, maybe to be in this area that I'll see um, the effect. But then I prayed, I said, well, God has then has addressed this thing and then let it, you know, he has let it go and it's all good. Now, years later, when I was in another job, it occurred to me that I was indeed stagnated. 
I want to be able to say it in a fancy way, but there's no other fancy way, man. I was stagnated. Imagine being in a situation where everybody, you poor, came in at the same time, on the same day, and everybody else had moved ahead, and you are still there. Not because you are bad, not because you are that. Just, it just so happens. Circumstances will just find a wonderful way of aligning themselves so that you are, you are, you are still there. It's not as if you are creeping no, or you are crawling. No, you didn't move. I said, what is going on? And this happened to be around the same time that I started to pay closer attention to my work with God. And then I started to handle this thing in prayer. It then became clear to me what was going on. I noticed that whenever I came to like maybe a, um, a transition point, like a, a point between where I was like, and then I needed to move to the next place. I would see, the, the, it was a pattern of this dream that I would see. I would see the exact same person just show up in that dream without fail. Every time I was at a transition point. So, for example, let's say you are trying to get a job or you are trying to get a promotion or whatnot. And just when it's like, maybe if a few days before that decision will be made or something like that, then you just, that dream will show up. And it may not even be that this person even says anything to me or not. They will just come into the space. Maybe they will just pass me by. And once that dream will happen, <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of English I speak. It's done. I said, what kind of thing is this? Initially, I wasn't connecting the dots. But it would always happen. At that point, maybe everything has been flowing well. Everything has been going well. Everything I'm wonderful, wonderful, perfect. And once I get to that final point, what that decision needed to be made, will just say that dream. It will just, the person, the person may not even talk to me, we're not even lock eyes, but I would see the person just walk across me, boom, and that's it. And then that thing will just scatter. I said, what is this? And then I had to go and trust this thing with God in prayer. I said, Father, this cannot continue to happen. I began to address that issue. I sat down and then properly repented. Not the childish uh, repentance. I was saying, I love you, I, I love and God is good and wonderful. No, I addressed this thing because I realized that this was indeed a spirit that was holding on to something. It's not that God didn't forgive me, but it was a spirit that was holding on to something and using it as a point of accusation. There are many of us who experience this in different ways. So for you, it may be different. Maybe it's that, oh, maybe something is going well in your business. I've heard of people give, you know, a different form of this. Maybe things are going well for them or they're about to step into something that maybe it's, they have a dream. Some random creature or spirit or person with the face will come, maybe sleep with them and then the whole thing scatters. And that's it. And they will continue to, ha it will happen at every point in time. Many of us can attest to this. For some of us, it even looks like, retrogression where you are trying to you know get across to something you're trying to move across somewhere in life and next thing you have a dream you find yourself back in your primary school you are wearing school uniform something useless like that and before you know it, that thing you are building just falls apart let me tell you it's best you understand how these things operate because i tell you that that time i was still praying oh father you are love and love is wonderful that that does not change god is love but i'm telling you that their spirit that their work is to walk around looking for things they can hold on to to accuse people and when you don't know that there is an accusation against you you don't know how to address it you don't know what to begin from you don't know what your problems are so you will continue to pile your papers you will continue to give speeches you will continue to show up in meetings showing up in interviews you'll be talking all the english you know meanwhile there's spiritual orchestrations behind what's going on with you that is what I want us to address today. That thing that has happened somewhere, that thing that you probably did so, and maybe you didn't think much about it, but it has become a monument of accusation against you. That each time you need to cross the line, each time you need to advance into a new level, that thing pops up in the spirit. And it's almost as though it speaks louder than what you are saying. And then that opportunity you are believing for gets thrown out. I want us to pray today. Because it took me, in, I was grateful that God opened my eyes. If not, I would, I would have kept thinking, well, it was maybe my deck wasn't the right color. Maybe I had to change the font size I used. It's not font size. It's not font size. You have to address things spiritually. So I had to start praying. I prayed to where I got to a point and I, I wouldn't see that thing anymore. Just so random and almost negligible. It just walk in front of you. Boom. What, what does that mean? What does that actually mean? Once that person will just walk across, that's the end. We're going to pray and say, Father, two things. 
I repent of any areas. That's why I read the scripture I did in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 8, because I know some of you were wondering what that has to do. Because the Bible is, is, is truth and it doesn't, it's not broken. It says, he that diggeth a picture for the, who he that breaketh and hedge, the serpent will bite. Some of us, the stagnation you are, in, in, you are, you are suffering or you are going through right now is actually a serpent's bite. Not because the serpent snuck in, but because the hedge was broken. So we're going to open our mouths right now and pray. And the first thing you're asking for is repentance. The second thing is that you are pulling down every voice of accusation in the spirit standing against you and where you ought to be in life. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Zila pota mende braka bisma ande lipra ando shakatara me sonde breke disa ande kabenia sonde breke tenia zuka nenia ta me sonde breke disa shanga de kabenia tuma sonde breke tenia ta I want you to open your mouth and maybe this is not your case. Maybe you don't have the name to return to me. Maybe you'll be perfectly here. Don't ever leave me here all your life. I want you to just open your mouth and pray for me. Ladies, I want us to pray this prayer again. It is very important that we do. Some of us don't understand the extent of this thing. Satan can be the, the pettiest creature you will ever find. Looking for the tiniest mm. things to nail on people. You won't know that it's this serious. Because we keep telling you people how the spirit realm is like a legal realm. You are walking around and thinking that it's about how you dress, following a dress code. I'm telling you that there are things that are going on in, in legal settings in the spirit. There are actually cases that are going on. You are presenting a file and saying, okay, I deserve to move into this next level. Like, yeah, second, they say, no, I can this person go there because they did this and they did that. I want us to please open our mouth and pray about this thing because like I said, some of these things, they're so tiny that you don't know. And that's the, that, that's the strange thing. Satan will go and look for the silliest thing to hold on to. And if you are not using your voice properly in the spirit, it will be like it's the only one showing up. Imagine a court case where they, are, they have a case against you. The accuser shows up, you didn't show. Who's going to win the case? It's as simple as that. Not because his case is that strong, but simply because you didn't show up. So there's no contest, there's no opposition. It's a natural decision to, to, to swing the judgment in the other person's favor. So we're going to open our mouth and pray again. You're going to say, Father, show me mercy. And then you are also going to take hold of the authority in the name of Jesus and shut the voice of the accuser. You are going to be authoritative. You are going to be bold about it. That boldness you have is from the blood of Jesus. It was shed and it has paid the price for all these things. So there's no reason a voice should be speaking against you. Doesn't matter whose voice that is. And you're going to take advantage of that blood and silence the voice of the accuser. That's why the Bible says every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you will condemn. That's what I mean now is that you are showing up in the courts. Judgment is supposed to be passed. There's someone who's speaking. You have, you, you have to speak and condemn that voice because judgment will be passed based on what you say. 
So if you show up there and you say nothing, or you don't even show up there at all, then it's a natural, you know, decision where that judge, how that judgment swings. So I need you to open your mouth again. Maybe you know it, maybe you don't know it. It's okay. Just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I shut down the voice of the accuser. I come against every accusation against me in the spirit, even right now by the blood of Jesus. Let's go on and pray. in jesus name amen we're going to pray for the next um uh, set of people i quite realize that all of these uh, prayer points don't impact everybody but we're going to pray for the next set of people. And these are those that are caught up in something that I have termed masked stagnation. That is, it is stagnation, but it is masked as something. And for some people, what that thing is masked as is what they have termed serial entrepreneurship. Not that serial entrepreneurship is not a thing. I will explain what I'm saying. I'm talking about people who have a restless spirit that makes them continue to move from one thing to another without actually getting to finish it. So it's not as though they built it to a point and then maybe the thing failed and then I decided to pack up. No, it's just, they just, something keeps pushing them. So they can't sit still long enough to reap the harvest of what they're planting. Because before that thing can sprout its fruit for them, something has moved them into somewhere else. This is a very important prayer point. Many of you may not understand it until you have experienced it. There are some people who can tell you that they've started businesses, they started ventures, they started in certain spaces that maybe at that time it was not well known. Maybe not many people were there and they labored in that place for a particular duration. And then something convinced them to go off and start a new venture only for them to look back 10 years, not 10 years one year, two years, and see that every other person who was laboring in that place where they were laboring has blown. That, that is that the best word I can use. And I think everybody can understand what I mean by blown. Everybody else who was doing it blew. But you moved on to something else that you are now, you don't even know what you are doing there, but you are just doing it. You have to pray against this thing because it calls itself serial entrepreneurship in your life. And again, I say it's not that serial entrepreneurship is not a thing. I'm saying for you, that is the, the, the lie Satan has told you that you are doing serial entrepreneurship. You are not doing it. You are under this thing that I've called mask stagnation. It's a restless spirit that won't let you stay in one place so properly, spend time watering your seed and reaping the necessary harvest. So you start one thing today, you move there to another thing tomorrow. Then before that one, even you have moved again. And every time you look back at those things that you were doing, every other person who started around the same time as you, in fact, people who came in there after you, they have blown. They've even maybe been able to retire. But you are there trying to build something new. I'm telling you that this is a form of stagnation. A spirit that keeps you busy doing nothing. You are doing so many things, but it's not actually yielding anything. This is something you have to pray about. I, let me say this, especially for those people who are multi-talented. 
you have to be very, very intentional about taking this prayer. Especially for those of you who are multi-talented, multi-gifted, you better take this prayer seriously. Because that's how you will be building something. Next thing, the enemy starts dangling something else in front of you. I, I think, ah, yeah, let me go and do this. Let me go and do that. You, be, you, you find yourself so busy and you cannot point to something concrete that you have gotten out of it. So when they ask you what you do, you're saying, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. The, what I'm saying is that the way you are laboring in one place, God has intended for you to cross a certain line, a certain, I don't know how to explain, a certain point. Do you understand? In your life, in your finances, based on your labors in that space. But then you left there too soon. You went somewhere. It's not that you couldn't do the second thing you are doing. It's just it wasn't the time. It wasn't the time for it. You still needed to labor in that place where you were currently. When that thing would have not properly shown up out of the ground and began to produce fruit, then you could move into something and begin to, to tend. Do you understand? Is anybody understanding what I'm saying? But there's something that just keeps trying to convince you. Hey, go on to this, go on to that, go on to this, go on to that. You are just seeing people, you're like, ah, let me go, let me go. You are, you, are, you are now a bundle of frustration. Because it's not that you lack skill. It's not that you lack talent. It's not that you don't know what to do. But you have around you a string of failed projects that you have called serial entrepreneurship. You know me, one of the things I, I do is I abuse it sometimes. I just like, I'm blunt. Like, you know, like, let's just say it as if it, because if you can't name that thing properly, you'll still be playing around it. Sometimes if you can give that thing the right name, then you can address it. When you are still masking it in something that makes you feel nice, then you, you'll be saying it small, small. This is not what you have to do. So I want us to open our mouth and begin to pray. And you are going to come against every restless spirit that does not let you sit down long enough to reap your harvest from something. That ability to stay somewhere, be planted in what God has asked you to do and get your harvest. I want us to open our mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against every spirit of distraction, every spirit of restlessness that continues to plunge me into cycles of stagnation. Let us open our mouth and begin to pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Amen. Still on this prayer point, Genesis 26 from verse 1, it says, And there was famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the land in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. I'm telling you someone right now. That place that you are planning to go into, that thing that that the, the Satan has been pushing you to do, I'm telling you that the name of that thing is Egypt. It sounds like the newest trend. It sounds like the newest thing. The name of that place is Egypt. And the instruction for you today is go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So join in this land and I will be with thee. Some of us are somewhere where God has asked us to be. But because other people are doing something and it's looking fancy, it's looking flashy, it's looking, you know, glittery, you want to go there. And this is the instruction. Maybe you have been asking God, so that you know what to do. And this is what God is telling you. Go not down into Egypt. Yes, that place is full of cucumbers. That place is full of garlics and all kinds of things. So it looks fancy, but God is telling you right now that that place is Egypt. Where you are right now, looks like there's famine. It looks like there's no promise there. It looks like it's not fancy. It looks like it can't really have much to offer you. But the Lord is telling you, sojourn in that land and I will be with thee and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, I will give all all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Jump to verse 12. It says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year and a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. I want somebody to pray on this call today because you are at a crossroad. You are at a decision point. You are wondering if to take what you have in your hand and invest it in this new thing that they have been telling you about or to put it in what you have been doing since that looks like it's not really yielding much. Not like it's not producing anything, but it's just like not looking like what you see people achieving on Instagram when they are posting what they do. And it seems like they, they are doing well. So where you are, it feels like it's a farming land. It feels like there's nothing in there and you are considering taking your limited resources resources and putting it into this other place because every other person's numbers are looking everybody seems to be flourishing but the instruction is that that place is Egypt. You need to sow in the land, just like uh, it says in verse 12. It says, then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. I want us to open our mouth and pray, because for some of us, this instruction is a redirection. Some of us have actually already gone to Egypt, so it's that we're actually going back. It's not that we are, we are trying to go. We have actually gone there. We have set up our load. We have put our things in the closet, and <laughs> you will begin to pack your things out of Egypt today and go back to the appointed land. There is a place that God has appointed for you. There is a place that God has given unto you, where you will prosper, where you will profit, where you will advance. So you are going to open your mouth right now and say, Father, let my steps be redirected if I have ventured into a place you haven't sent me. And for those who don't even know what to do right now, say, Father, open my eyes to know exactly which land I need to plant in, which business I need to stay in, which relationships I need to keep, which, which what I need to do, where my investments need to go. Open your mouth and ask God to show you that land because God showed it to Isaac. He was ready to go, but God was willing to intercept him, interrupt him and say, do not go there. No matter how beautiful it looks, stay here, plant here. He did and he prospered. So I want us to open our mouth and begin to pray and say, Father, Show me my land. I'm <laughs> 
Amen. Let me say this. For some of you, you are going to be receiving very clear instructions following the prayers that we've taken today. During this month of September, I need you to pay attention and listen very intently to the Spirit. Because for some of you, God will finally speak. Because you were, it's not that He wasn't speaking before, it's just you weren't willing to hear it. You had something in your mind. God will be making it clear to you. For some of you, you will have to move out of where you have gone to build a monument for yourself that God wasn't building. For some of you, you will have to... To, to receive the grace to stay where you are because you were already planning to move. So you are going to let God speak to you this month. Am I, am I supposed to be in this country? Am I supposed to be in this city? Should I remain in paid employment? Should I go to business? Should I go back into paid employment? Because maybe you didn't come into this business. You listen, God will tell you exactly what you need to do. And I pray that you have the grace to listen and obey exactly what he has told you to do because that is the land that holds your hundredfold. And it is well with everything everyone here that is still confused, that is still asking God, what is it? Because I'm telling you this month, you will receive that answer from God in Jesus name. And you will also receive the grace to do what he has asked you to do. So the instruction was from Mary. It says, whatever he says unto you, just do it. It's as simple as that. So this month you will receive your instruction in the name of Jesus. I want to take the next prayer. This is from Proverbs chapter um, 22 and 28 to 29. Very quick prayer, but we're going to take two prayer points out of this. So this is a part of scripture that I've read a few times, but I never really like looked at these verses together. It says, yeah, it says, remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. The next verse says, see as thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. You see, for a long time, I, well, I, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe many of you have connected these verses before. I never connected them before. But as I prepared, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see something else here. I'll read it again. It says, remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean men. For the first time, the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to understand that these two verses, in a sense, are connected, can be connected, if you will. There is what is called the ancient landmarks. And for this situation that we're talking about, we're talking about the standard, the bar, if you will. John, is this making sense? The bar. And the Bible is telling us, don't in your own, you know, uh, uh, smartness, in your own craftiness, in your own laziness, try to remove that bar. That's why it then said in the next verse, said, if you see a man who is diligent in his ways, will he not stand before king? That is, this is the bar. The bar is diligence. That is it. The bar is diligence. So he said, do not remove the ancient landmarks. From time of old, a standard was set. That standard is diligence. And he said, if you see a man who is diligent, will he not stand before kings? For some of us, this is the prayer that we have this morning. What you are dealing with is not a spirit that is fighting you. It's the fact that you have not yet met up with, this, with the standard. 
you 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 have failed to meet the bar. If someone understands what I'm saying on this call, because I don't know if it's making sense to anyone, let me just know if anyone is understanding what I'm trying to say. What the issue is, is that your stagnation is not because someone hates you. It's not because Satan has oppressed you. It's that you have failed to meet the requirements. You have failed to meet the standard. You have failed to meet the bar. I read it one more time. It says, remove not the ancient landmark which their fathers have set. So I know we're in a generation where we try to do things quick. We try to cut corners, right? Someone gives you a project. Someone gives you a contract. That contract should be worth, you know, I don't know, 50,000 hours. Maybe that's the, the price of it. And instead of you to produce outputs that's commensurate with that amount, you go and find very cheap things to give them. Guess what? You have made something from them in that moment. You think you have cheated them. You have only cheated yourself. Why? Because they won't come back to you again. They will never refer you to anybody. And that's it. And you will continue to cry and pray on the altar for the grace to come out of stagnation. But the stagnation you experience is not because the spirit has pursued you. It's because you have failed to meet the bar. You have failed to meet the standard. Because the Bible says, if you see a man who is diligent in his ways, he will stand before kings. That is the bar. So we're going to pray because this is where some of us need help. It's the grace to actually give ourselves to the requirements of greatness, the requirements of success. There is a bar. There is a landmark. Another translation says it's a boundary line. Like this is the line, this is the cutoff. And some of us, we have barely gotten there. We are okay with doing the bare minimum. If we can just give something, let, let them just take it and leave me alone. But the Bible is letting us know that there is a mark. And if you miss the mark, your life will show. If you miss the mark, you will wonder why other people are catering to kings and you are catering to people, to peasants. It's saying that there is a mark. For some of us, this doesn't even have anything to do with our business. It has something to do with your work with God. It has something to do with your calling. There is a mark. There is a level of diligence. There is a level of, of, of time you give to the study of the word. There's a, an amount of time you give to prayer. There is an amount of fasting that's required. There's consecrations that you should be giving yourself to. The Bible is telling us that don't get smart in your own sense and choose to move the line back. You will be only deceiving yourself because that line has been set. And if you cannot meet that mark, you will lag behind in life. You will lag behind in your calling. You will lag behind in your career. You will lag behind in any of those areas. So we're going to open our mouth and ask God for grace. Because for some of us, we don't realize that this is the thing that is affecting us. We're so focused on the short term. We're so focused on what we're doing right now. And we lose out in life because of this. We're going to open our mouth and pray. Because may it not be said that we are the ones shutting the doors that God opens for us. God will open a door for you. You step into that place. You do the most surprising thing ever. And people just have to make a decision and say, okay, you know what? That's it. We're not working with this person anymore. You're going to pray. Because many of well, the time, some of us are not even doing it on purpose. We are just going based off of what we've seen others do. Maybe where we were raised, maybe where we were trained, that's what we saw people do. So we don't know better. And that's exactly what we're giving to, to, to in, in this new place that God has set us. So we're going to open our mouth and pray and say, Father, grant me the grace to give myself to what is required to hit that mark, to achieve success. With success, with greatness, there is a bar. There's a requirement. That's what you're asking God for. I don't know exactly what this bar is. Or maybe you actually do, but you've never thought to actually put yourself in a place where you could give it. I'm going to say, Father, help me. Give me the grace. Give me the discipline. Give me the presence of mind. Whatever it is that you need to meet the standard, to meet the mark, so that that thing that you have showed me that has been allocated to my life can actually be seen, that I can actually eat the, the fruit of that thing. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray. Ramdan <laughs> 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 
Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So we have prayed about godly boundary lines, right? Boundary lines that have been put in place you know, by, by systems, even by God, so that people can attain certain things. Because it's like, if you can just hit that mark, then you will see the results. And I pray for the grace for everyone here who is sincerely asking God to open their eyes to see where they are, where they are, where they are missing it, to see where they need help, that God will open your eyes. God will start pointing you to people. Maybe it's that you need to sign up for formal mentorship. Maybe it's that you need to pay for a course. Maybe it's that you need to go for training. I don't know what that would look like for you. Maybe it's that you need to sit down with yourself and rearrange your schedule. Maybe you need to let go of one of the many hats you are wearing and things that you are doing so that you can actually have time for your secret place. God will have to open your eyes to see what that thing is. God will have to let you know what it is because we don't want you to come here and think, oh, everything is one evil spirit that's chasing me. You know, sometimes it's, this is what it comes down to. Do you need to get a certification? Do you need to buy some books and read them? This is what I'm saying. That stagnation that you're experiencing is not because of an oppression. It's a natural judgment for the person who does not meet that mark and i pray by the grace of god that god will open your eyes to see where you need to make changes where you need to do the right thing so that things can begin to shift in your life now that we've spoken about the right boundary lines we're also going to now address demonic boundary lines because many of us are familiar with that already and it is on this note that we'll close the meeting today we're going to pray about demonic boundary lines because for some of us indeed that ancient landmark that the father said those are the exact landmarks that we need to remove some of us come from families where boundary lines were drawn they were drawn to fence people in, not to cause people to advance. They were drawn by people who came into agreement with spirits, where in order to get one thing, they paid with another thing. And so that other thing that they paid with, a boundary line has been drawn because of X, Y, Z. Nobody from this family can go beyond that. Nobody from that family can go beyond that. So that thing that you're experiencing in the form of stagnation is that you only go so far. It's like when you put a leash on, a, on an animal, a dog or whatever animal you put a leash on, and that animal goes, or let's just say this you tie like a um a, a a goat to like a tree or something and it's like however far that that goat decides it wants to go it can only go so far but that rope will come to an end you understand what i'm saying for some of us we come from those kinds of backgrounds those kind of, the kind of families where transactions have been made agreements have been put in place covenants have been enacted okay such that they have put demonic boundary lines in those families. So you can only go so far. So that's why when you do your best, you hit a peak in this particular stream, in this particular business, it goes nowhere. Then you find me to go and start something else. And it's like, even if you start a hundred of them, you will never actually pass that line. Why? Because that an agreement was put in place. Right now, we are actually going to be pulling down those boundaries. We said this in Kings, I said, you are the line that God is drawing in the sand of your family. So regardless of where that line was drawn in the past, that, oh, people cannot pass there, you have shown up to bring in new government, to set new boundary lines. 
So you are standing in place to enact what the new boundary lines need to be. In future, when people refer to the ancient landmarks of their family, they will refer to the line that you put in place because you stood in place to take out the former line that was there. You wiped it out by the power of priesthood, by the power in the name of Jesus, and you set a new line, a new line that is that does not have limitation so we're going to open our mouths and pray against any such thing because the truth is we some of us don't know you may not know until you actually hit those clips some of us even when we hit those clips we don't know that that's what's going on it's because an ordinance was put in place something an agreement that's a contract so we're going to speak against every such demonic boundary line that exists in our family that have been designed to fence people in i actually saw it very briefly as the prayers were about to start when Shadi was still leading out i saw a very 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 clearly it was like this fence that was built it was it was it was made of this it was it looks like it was made of bamboo but it was like built round about the whole idea of that fence was to fence people in it was to lock people in so i'm going to pray against such it may be one person it may be two people it doesn't matter how many people there are on the call today but if there is something in your family that dictates how far people can go in life before they hit their clip you are going to pull that thing right down right now by the power in the name of jesus let us open our mouths and begin to pray. You are going to pull this mountain down. has to bring the prayers to a close today we're going to pray for strength it's that simple the bible says in jeremiah 12 and 5 it says if you have run with footmen and they have wearied you then how can you contend with horses for some of us this is just what we need the strength of character the strength the grace to just stand to just keep at it that's what we need the strength to push the ability to to, to, to be dogged and just stay in that thing and continue to push 
For some of us, this is what we need. We have been laboring and we are tired. So we're going to say, Father, give me strength. Give me strength to stay the course. Give me strength to continue working at this thing. Give me strength to continue laboring where you have planted me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, because even as you have spoken to us, we have prayed in line with your word. We have prayed in accordance with that which you've spoken to us. And so I ask that, Father, in this month of September, let it be a month of realignment for many. Let it be a month of clarity for many. For those who are still struggling to understand where God will have them put their labors. For those who are still struggling to understand where God will have them spend their time. Father, I ask that this month be a month of clarity. For those of us who have somehow wandered into the wrong field, Lord, let this be a month of realignment. Make it clear to us where we ought to be. And we ask that you give us the grace to also move in line uh, with your instructions. Lord, I also speak over those who have suffered stagnation because of an accuser, because of the accuser of the brethren, even as the Bible tells us, the accuser of the brethren that has been consistently withstanding them, standing against them, resisting them. Father, I ask that every such accusation is broken right now in the name of Jesus. We tender the blood of Jesus, even as our defense in Jesus' name. For everyone here who has the accuser speaking against them, Lord, we speak by the name of Christ. We speak by the name of Jesus and say that that accusation is pulled down right now in the name of Jesus. Even as we have repented and we have appropriated the blood, I decree that every one whose stagnation was sponsored by this phenomenon, Father, that stagnation comes to an end today in the name of Jesus. I also speak over everyone here in the month of September. There will be an influx of testimonies, an influx of testimonies. Some people, this is the finishing month for them, even as this is the ninth month. For some people, this is the finishing month for them. It's almost as though they have labored. It's like the duration of when someone has carried for the entire nine months. For some people, this this is a month of delivery. This is a month of harvest. This is a month of taking hold. I decree that over everyone in here, just like how a woman will go into labor, that's how she will, you know, birth. Father, I decree that even as they have labored, let them receive their, their, the fruit of their labor. Even in this month of September, let them receive the fruit of their labor. Let them receive the fruit of their labor in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I feel the need to speak over someone here specifically. I don't know who you are. I want you to understand that you have been carrying something. You have been carrying something for a long time. You have been tending to that thing. Some days it has meant that you cried. For some days it meant that you were just quiet because you wanted to throw in the towel. You wanted to give up. But I speak to you and I speak over you, even in this month of September, that in this month, you will take delivery of that which you have been tending to. The time has been fulfilled. The time has been completed. The cycle has been completed. And in this month, you will take delivery of that which you have been tending to. That thing that the Spirit of God handed to you and you have been nurturing. You have been nurturing. You have been holding and just taking care of it, even when it wasn't convenient. In this month, you will take delivery of that thing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, everyone, for logging on for the three days. God bless you. And for those who are in Abuja, we will see on Thursday or Friday, depending on which day we see. God bless you. But yes, for those in Abuja, please, 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 Friday, let us all be present at the venue. Those who are not in Abuja, you can log on online. And you shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, actually, because the tribe has their program on Saturday and Sunday. And I know many of us are part of the tribe as well. So I look forward to seeing you all. Bye, everyone. God bless you.
God bless you. Time, everyone. everyone. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye.